from the messed up face scan and also the rating system, it's safe to say that the Shell franchise failed Jack Hughes. And also, let's talk about his head coach, Lindy Ruff. Would he be on the hot seat if the New Jersey Devils got off to a slow start? A lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer and also Dell's writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So let's talk about something on this show that I don't think I've ever done before. Let's talk about video games. So if you follow the show's Twitter page, at Locked On Devils on Twitter, you probably already know what direction I'm heading in because I got to talk about Trevor Zegras. I got to talk about Jack Hughes. I got to talk about EA Sports. I got to talk about their face scan. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I need to rant about because uh, I think EA Sports got it wrong. So they've been releasing ratings and also uh, screenshots of the game and revealing certain players' overall status. And for the top 10 under 23, Jack Hughes is ranked number four at an 87 overall. Now, do I think it should be a tick or two higher? I personally think so. But given Jack Hughes' history, because remember his rookie year was – pretty forgettable to say the least. And he, he had like the worst performance for a first overall pick forward since uh, Joe Thornton in the late nineties. And then obviously he was able to turn around in the shortened 56 game season, but outside of the Metro, you didn't really talk about Jack Hughes or you didn't really see the uh, firepower that he was capable of. But this past season, despite only suiting up in like 40 or so games, Jack Hughes was able to have a breakout year and he was able to put his name on the map and, uh, I, I just believe that, you know, Jack Hughes deserves a lot more respect. He deserves a lot more credit than what he's being given. Because if you need a reminder, in 49 game appearances, he had 26 goals, 30 assists for a grand total of 56 points. So he was on pace to have 90 or so points. So my thing about Jack Hughes is that I just feel as though he needs to get more respect and he needs to be given more credit. And obviously, when I first joined Locked On, I was very critical of Jack Hughes, but he was able to change my opinion wholeheartedly. And uh, Jack Hughes is certainly the truth. That's why I nicknamed, nicknamed him the, the truth. And ultimately, Jack Hughes is the future for New Jersey Devils. He's there, definitely a franchise piece, and he deserves his eight-year extension. And um, I, I can't really complain about that. But digressing a little bit, it just doesn't seem like people outside of the Devils organization, it doesn't seem like all the NHL is really on board with the whole Jack Hughes discussion, because if you guys recall, the whole reason why I was reaching out to Locked On Ducks in the first place was because somebody called me out on Twitter, a former host of Locked On Sharks, and he basically said that I was, you know, freaking insane, just uh, in PG terminology for saying that uh, Trevor Zegras wishes that he was Jack Hughes. And I was like, you know what, let's do a crossover about this. So reached out to Locked On Ducks, J.D. Hernandez, and uh, we're tr- still trying to, you know, work something out and do this crossover. Hopefully we're able to work something out next week. We were supposed to do it a couple of days ago, but uh, just some unfortunate circumstances happened and we had to postpone it. And I've also reached out to the hosts of Locked On Senators, so Ross and Brandon, and we're going to try to do a crossover in regards to Jack Hughes and Tim Stutzel. And speaking of which, Stutzel is also on the list for top uh, 10 under 23 players. So Stutzel is ranked uh, number seven at... 85 and then Cole Caulfield someone I've talked about extensively over the summer he is uh the last ranked player in terms of the top 10 for under 23 at 84 now here's the thing about Jack Hughes and his 87 overall rating um I believe it should be a little higher like I alluded to moments ago just because Jack Hughes was on pace to have anywhere from 90 to 100 points had he suited up in like anywhere from 75 to all 82 games and I just think that Jack Hughes has taken his game to another level. And, you know, the, the host of Locked On Centers, they were like, well, look, Tim Stutzel did much better in his first two years in the league. You are correct about that. But here's the thing. Jack Hughes just took his game to another level. And, and you know, you know, yes, he got off to a, a late start. He was a late bloomer. But, you know, late bloomers are able to just, you know, move their way past a few people. And I think that's what Jack Hughes has done with Tim Stutzel and also Trevor Zegras as well. 
and not to mention Cole Caulfield uh, to add into that mix. So I'm glad that Jack Hughes is getting some recognition for the EA Sports uh, video game. But here's where I have an axe to grind. So let's start with the face scan. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put up the picture. And I, if you're listening on a podcast streaming service, I'll do my best to describe it. It looks nothing like Jack Hughes. I, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but when comparing it to an actual photo of Jack Hughes, I guess the eyebrows and the eyes are somewhat correct. But when I'm looking at it like his lower face, and it's weird to say this, they made him look a little too, how would I say this, chubby. They made him look like he was like a 30-something-year-old veteran player who's been in the league for a while. So if you look at an actual picture of Jack Hughes, he has a kid complexion. Like the dude looks like he could be like anywhere from 15 to 17 in this day of age. So uh, I don't know what EA Sports does for their overall face scans, but if they actually do get the players to scan their faces into the game, similar to what other sporting franchises do like NBA 2K, they really need to get Jack Hughes another face scan because for some reason the, the computers have done them so dirty. Like it just looks nothing like Jack Hughes. I'm, I'm not convinced by it. And yeah, it, it just doesn't scream Jack Hughes. It just screams someone who's been in the league for a long time and somebody who just gets flashbacks or so to like a, a, a rough patch during their career. That I, I might be overstepping it a little bit, but I'm sorry that that face scan is a miss in my eyes. I, I, I don't really get it. I don't I don't like it at all. Now, when looking at the ratings once again, so just a reminder, Jack Hughes is rated uh, 87 in the NHL video game. But who's also ranked in 87 and just ahead of them is Trevor Zegras. Now, here's the thing, guys. Like I said about the Tim Stutzel situation, I get that Trevor Zegras is a bright star in the league. And I get that a lot of people, you know, get excited when Trevor Zegras scores because I believe he did have a, a Michigan goal. But the thing is, is that Trevor Zegras is not better than Jack Hughes. I don't care what any of you say. So, I'll give credit when credit is due. Uh, Zegras appeared in 75 games, 23 goals, 38 assists for a grand total of 61 points. That is great and all. That is solid production. But when looking at Jack Hughes, and I tweeted this out, Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegras both have the same rating, 87, in the EA Sports Shell video game. Last season, Hughes, 56 points, almost had the same amount of points as Zegras in 26 less games. There's levels to this EA Sports. Be better. So I don't know if they're giving Trevor Zegras some extra brownie points just because he's one of the cover athletes for the game, but it doesn't make sense for Jack Hughes to be rated at 87 and Trevor Zegras to be rated at 87 when Jack Hughes appeared in 26 less games and almost, just almost had the same amount of points as Zegras who appeared in 75 games. So 75 out of the 82 games, 49 out of the 82 games for the other player. That doesn't make any sense. Why is Trevor Zegras the same rating? And why does uh, the Shell franchise, why do they rank them? Or why does why do they rank Zegras just a, a position higher than Jack Hughes? I really don't get that. So it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this episode. Jack Hughes needs a lot more respect. I don't know what it's going to take for people to realize that Jack Hughes is phenomenal and electric, a franchise player, and could possibly win the Hart Trophy sooner rather than later because remember i talked to jackson bond a betting expert just a couple days ago and he said like your best bet is to put money on jack hughes to possibly win the heart trophy if he stays healthy and if the new jersey devils are able to just uh sneak their way into the playoffs because it would be sort of like a taylor hall situation so i i don't know like jack hughes is a future heart trophy winner i think he can someday lead the league in scoring if all goes well I think he will get 100 or plus points this season if if he stays healthy. I don't really get it. There's levels to this. I don't know what the process is like to get these ratings where they're at. But EA Sports, you missed with his face scan and you missed with his rating. And I'd be okay with his rating if Trevor Zegras wasn't rated higher than him. Yes, they both have 87 ratings, but Trevor Zegras is in the third position. Jack Hughes is in the fourth position. And then... When looking at most Cider, it's like, look, I get that Cider won the Calder Memorial Trophy. I get that most Cider it was an exciting rookie for the Detroit Red Wings. I get that he won the Calder Memorial Trophy. Uh, and, you know, it, it, when it looked like it was going to be Lucas Raymond's uh, uh, award for a long period of time. So most Cider definitely is a great player. But 
rating him the same as Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegras? I don't really know in that regards. I'm a little, I'm a little iffy about that one, but um, I'm, I'm not going to complain. At least he's below Jack Hughes, but uh, in terms of the in terms of the rankings, but the ratings being the exact same, 87 across the boards for Trevor Zegras, Jack Hughes, and Mo Sider. Call me crazy, but I think Jack Hughes should be like either an 88 or an 89, just so he separates himself just a little bit from Zegras and Sider. I get that might be somewhat of a controversial take for like Detroit Red Wings fans or Anaheim Ducks fans, but I'm sorry. I just told you the the facts. I told you the backstory. I told you the narrative. I told you what Jack Hughes has going for him. And I believe that Jack Hughes is the better player. And I think a lot of people can back me up on that claim. So I, I don't know what the process was like. I don't know what the selection was like for EA Sports, but in my eyes, they missed it. So if you don't want to miss, if you don't want to be like EA Sports, then I suggest you hit up the Bet Online uh, phone line and head on over to betonline.net because it's your number one source for your football betting info this season. Find all the latest players' developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up to minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest, easy way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, golf. And NASCAR, head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Anywho, enough of video game world. Let's get back to the real world. So let's talk about Lindy Ruff and his overall job security once again. Now, I've touched on this in prior episodes, but I feel as though it's important enough to revisit and just go into more detail as to where I'm at currently with Lindy Ruff and how I feel uh, as though the season is going to uh, go for him in regards to him remaining as a head coach for New Jersey Devils or him potentially losing it. Because I talked to Jackson Bond once again just a few days ago and I asked him, okay, what do you think about the overall situation for Lindy Ruff? Because according to the bet online odds, Lindy Ruff is like top five coaches to either get fired or resign during the course of the year if you want to place your bets on that. I personally wouldn't just because I think that Lindy Ruff is going to remain with the Devils organization, at least throughout this season, unless things go catastrophically bad. So I don't anticipate for that to happen, especially since the New Jersey Devils were able to get a decent amount of veterans to help them out in that regard. So where do I think Lindy Ruff is going to go from here? Um, I think Lindy Ruff's job security is safe for the most part but he's definitely held to a tighter leash just because um, the fact of the matter is this, if you had to blame someone last year during the course of the, of the season for New Jersey devils and the scapegoat was always Lindy Ruff. And it's one of the reasons why I'll never be a coach. It's just because coaches are always the last ones to be given credit, but they're always the first ones to be blamed. Now I was always on the defense for Lindy Ruff. I said like, look, I get that people are frustrated, but Lindy Ruff is not the problem here. It's possibly the staff around him. So if Lindy Ruff is not gone, his staff is certainly gone. Now, I, why am I bringing this up once again? Because I saw an article on allaboutthejersey.com, and they basically talked about Lindy Ruff needs a good start to keep his job. So basically, uh, they're trying to say, like, if Lindy Ruff doesn't get off to a good start to the season, then his job security might be in trouble. And Here's why I'm going to touch on this. It really depends on what happened. So you can't just say like, um, and, and I'm not trying to discredit anyone. I'm just, this is based on my perspective and my perspective only. So it, it depends on the perspective and it depends on the context of where you look at it. So the context that I based on Lindy Ruff last year was this. He dealt with, he had to deal with a lot of injuries. I talked about Jack Hughes's injury woes early on in the episode, only appearing in 49 games. And that's our franchise player. And that's our best, uh, that's our best asset. So if he's not on the rink, the New Jersey devils aren't going to sail in the right direction. And then stupidly Lindy Ruff decided to put Jack Hughes at a winger position because he wanted to, um, he wanted to do something with Jesper Brad and Nico Keisha. And I was like, that's going to fail. That doesn't make any sense. Put Jack Hughes at a center position, not a winger position that, I I don't know what he was thinking in that regards. It was short lived and I'm glad it was, but had he stuck with that, he is certainly gone because I guarantee you if Jack Hughes is playing at a wing position for an extended period of time, his numbers are not going to be good. Digressing a little bit. 
Um, going back to what I was saying, the context of it is everything. I remember uh, a, a friend of the show, Robert Inkin Jr., tweeted this out during Thanksgiving of last year. He said the amount of times that Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, and Mackenzie Blackwood have been on the same rink together up to that point was like 20 or so games. And you need to take into consideration uh, all three of them had to had deal with injury at, at some point. So Nico Keisher had to deal with it during the 56-game season. Jack Hughes had to deal with it this past season. Mackenzie Blackwood had to deal with it this past season. So once again, the amount of games that they've been on the rink together, not really all that much. So that's also something you have to take into consideration or the fact that COVID certainly played a huge factor for New Jersey Devils because similar to a lot of teams around the league, especially those Canadian teams, seemed like the New Jersey Devils could never put out their roster at full strength. So it was like either Jesper Bratt to the COVID protocol uh, list, Jack Hughes, same thing after the All-Star break, Nico Heischer, by CFC in like a week or two, going quarantine. So I'm glad that the restrictions have lessened a little bit, and I don't anticipate it regressing anytime soon. But the point I'm just trying to make is that look at that sort of context. So what did Lindy Ruff had to roll out? Basically, a lot of prospects, a lot of unproven players, or he had to play musical chairs with the goalie situation. There were seven or so goalies for New Jersey Devils. What, what, what are you honestly expecting from the New Jersey Devils? Quite honestly, I'm, I'm surprised the roster wasn't that much worse. Like, it, it could have gotten so much worse, but I'm glad that they were able to figure something out and, and just try to save face during the course of the offseason. And adding, adding those veteran players will certainly play a huge factor for them. Now, um, when looking at Lindy Ruff and does he need to get off to a good start to keep his job? I don't think that's entirely accurate. I think you're going to have to wait until midseason because what's going to happen during the during the the first like 10 or so games during the season? Well, what if the New Jersey Devils hypothetically get off to a three and seven start? Are people going to be talking about Lindy Ruff being uh, called to be fired? Sure, I think so. But I don't think that's the answer because it's too early. So you don't want to jump the gun on anything, but at the same time, you don't want to be too late. So it really depends on where the New Jersey Devils are at. So if there's so many teams that are get in the Metro that are getting off to a good start and the New Jersey Devils are just slipping and slipping and slipping and they're putting themselves in a hole, you know, drastic uh, times call for drastic measures. Or I think that's how the phrase goes. Or uh, desperate times call for drastic measures. I think that's how it, I think that's how it goes. But you get the point of what I'm trying to say, which is, like, it depends on where the New Jersey Devils are at in the Metro. It depends on how their roster is. It depends on how their star players are clicking. Like, the thing about Jesper Bratt, is he taking a few steps backwards? Or is Nico Keisher uh, getting off to a slow start? Where's Jack Hughes in the lineup? Is he helping Sharon Govich and Dawson Mercer reach their potential? Is Andre Pilat, uh just falling a, a little bit under the radar because we are paying him a decent amount of money? So, you know, the question that that's the question on everyone's mind, which is like, what's going to happen at the beginning of the season for New Jersey Devils? And honestly, I'm not psychic. I don't know what's going to happen, but I guarantee you, if the New Jersey Devils get off to a slow start, I don't think Lindy Ruff's job security uh, would be in question. Now, if this is happening in December or if this is happening in early January or if the New Jersey Devils are somewhat in a decent position to make a comeback and they're still not really clicking then by all means, you got to pull the trigger and you got to let go of Lindy Ruff because it was this. Let me give you an example. Like late December, going into the Christmas break, the New Jersey Devils were on like a six game losing streak. But then they get Jack Hughes back and, or or they get a few other pieces back as well. And they're able to just, you know, go full speed ahead on the offensive side of things. But the main issue was defense and the goaltending. That was the that was the Achilles heel for New Jersey Devils because they could score seven goals a night, but it doesn't matter if you give up eight or, you know, if you score two goals, but you give up four, you know, two goals should be enough to win you the game, but you give up four, it's kind of hard. So that that's sort of what I saw in late December and in early January for New Jersey, New Jersey Devils, excuse me. I saw a lot of great potential, but unfortunately it was raw potential as in it wasn't polished. Now, Going into the season, I think the New Jersey Devils will be a lot more polished. Lindy Ruff is going to have a lot more to work with. He can feed off ideas uh, off of Andrew Burnett because here's the thing about Andrew Burnett. You got someone who worked in the modern NHL and it's working for him. And you got an old school coach in Lindy Ruff. So maybe they can work together and come to a middle agreement of how to run the organization. Because I think once Lindy Ruff's contract is up, 
I think that position is going to go to Andrew Burnett. And I'm sure Lindy Ruff is going to give him pointers. I think Burnett is going to do the same towards Ruff because the thing about Andrew Burnett, able to win the President's Trophy with the Florida Panthers just recently, and I'm surprised that they didn't bring him back. I, I thought that was stupid of him, but threw us a bone. But, um, yeah, so I love Andrew Burnett. I love what – he could potentially bring to the organization. I think he's also going to play a big factor for New Jersey Devils, but it, it just really depends on the context. It really depends on what the situation is like for New Jersey Devils. And it just depends on like where we're at in terms of development. It depends on where our stars are at. It depends on like um, are people developing in the right way? Because Jack Hughes said recently that the New Jersey Devils failed Lindy Ruff. And I, I would have to agree, or they didn't really fail him per se. They just weren't healthy and he just didn't have anything to work with. So I don't think they failed them, but the times they were healthy, I think they could have put better efforts. And sometimes you, you can only put so much blame on the coach. So when looking at that all about the jersey.com and just, you know, look at the title, will Lindy Ruff be gone if the Devils get off to a slow start? My answer, you know, uh, th this is just my full-fledged answer, is no. I don't think Lindy Ruff will be on the hot seat if the Devils get off to a slow start. However, if they're showing inconsistency as the season progresses and they're still within a respectable striking distance of maybe getting a wild card, Maybe you consider it, but if they're like, you know, with the Flyers in the bottom tier of the Metro, something's got to give, something's got to go. Unfortunately, Lindy Ruff will be the first one out. So let me know what you guys think about Lindy Ruff. Let me know what you guys think about Jack Hughes and the EA Sports thing, and I will catch you guys in the next episode. So that's all the time I have for you. Thanks for listening. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. EA Sports. Please fix your rating system. It is trash. And fix your face scans. In fact, fix your game. I'm, I'm tired of paying 60 bucks for the same game, but I guess that's on me. So, yep, that's where I stand. See you in the next episode, guys. Thanks for listening once again.